Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having a great weekend, uh, really aggressive trading week, okay? Uh, very, very aggressive. I, I think f for those who've been watching, and again, we've been putting out a lot of these free content uh, throughout the week now. I, I make these videos now uh, every single day for the exception of Friday night and Saturday. We do the weekend update. And what's, what's great again about uh, the whole trading journey, okay? Uh, unless you are on the Forbes list, you, your ass better be working, okay? Um, the, the one thing that I, I've recognized throughout the years, when I stop, right? When I stop and I feel um, very complacent, I feel very lazy, your results in life in general are going to reflect that. So for example, I'm probably one of the biggest eaters on the planet. Okay, I'm a skinny guy, skinny fat guy, but for the last like three months when it started from October, I was on a, on a binge, like on a binge. I was eating for three people with the chocolates, with this, that, the other thing. And I realized one day when I woke up one day and I said, well, wait a minute, this has to stop. I feel like crap. Okay. I feel like crap. I look like crap. My wife said, you look hideous. And again, granted. So something had to give. So I could, I could have easily progressed, right? I kept on going. Eh, I don't care. Kept on going, kept on going. And again, there was no upside here, right? Absolutely no upside. The sugar intake would have led to something really, really aggressive. So I made a choice. I stopped. Uh, I went on a very, very aggressive um, intermittent fasting uh, diet, exercise, all that stuff. And I knocked out about six pounds in about two weeks or so. Um, and that's kind of goes to where your trading is going to be, okay? I, I think, again, because there's so much information out there, okay? And again, whether that information is good, bad, or indifferent, I think unfortunately because the only exposure new traders have is to information on social media platforms, that's all they're digesting. So you could be trading two, three, four, five, six years and digesting bad information and it's the equivalent of you eating chocolate five times a day and drinking cans of Coke 26 times a day, okay? Nothing good's gonna come out of it. And you start getting frustrated when you're digesting bad information that you can't understand what you're doing wrong because you've been doing it such a long time. And the most amazing part of it is, you know, in this business, time, okay, equals experience. And there's no greater teacher, okay, than experience. The problem is, if you're digesting really bad information within that first two, three, four years where you're first most vulnerable and impressionable, okay, and you're looking to set a foundation, you could be literally the person who's drinking the 26 cans of Coke and not realizing it's bad for you, but it tastes good, but it's diet, right? It's diet Coke. Why, why is it so bad? And that's the problem. Uh, unfortunately, because... When I started out, I started out at a pretty big desk. We had great um, personal relationships on those desks. It was a bunch of traders. And for the first, I would say probably for the first nine, 10 years, that was my exposure, the physical contact, the raw emotion that traders bonded together on the same desk. Unfortunately, most of you guys, the only experience or the only relationship you guys have is on social media. That, you know, that avatar with the cool car, right? who's giving you alerts and all that good stuff, that's what you're con consuming. So if you're doing this for two, three, four years, and you're just a, you know, consuming really bad raw information, you might, as well, you, know, you might as well be a complete rookie in your first week out because you're not getting anywhere. And you know you're not getting anywhere. And you're stuck in neutral, but you accept this as normal. Again, it's like that couple who's been married for 20, 30 years. They're almost accepting that they hate each other to the, to the point they don't even speak anymore. So you're willing to ride it out until magically you believe it's going to work one day. And it doesn't. And, and, and it really, really doesn't. This is a, an incredibly unforgiving business. It really is. It's the only business in the world that hates you, that hates you back. And the most amazing part of it is at some point, if you're trading two, three, four, five years, 
and you're just not getting anywhere. You, you get the whole thing. You know how to read a chart. You understand, well, here's the five-day moving average. Here's the 10-day. Here's the 20. Here's the 50. Here's the 100. Stocks should hold this. They should bounce. But for whatever reason, you have all this information in front of you, but yet it's still you can't figure out why you can't gain any type of consistency. And again, the easiest thing to do is basically look at the information that you've consumed for many, many years. And it's very frustrating, okay? Because you run into people and turn around and say, well, I, I can't understand. This person uh, looks like they're doing well. They sound like they're doing well. Everything is great. I'm trading three years more than them and I can't get going. Again, you don't need to go back to the drawing board. Okay. Sometimes you have to take the information that you already had, whether it's bad, it's a whole different story and start omitting bad things. Again, you don't need to trade at 931. The day is not over at 932. I give you my word. Okay. I promise you, if you don't chase that stock up 35% pre-market, there's other ways to, you know, there's other ways to make money. Okay. You don't need to be, you know, you don't need to have the, the thought process. Well, I could be done my whole day in 30 minutes. Really? I would love to do that. You show me how to do that. Make consistent gains in the first 30 minutes of the day. Go do something else. Go play tennis. That'd be great. You show me these things. I'll be more than happy to, to, to look at them. I would more than happy to absorb that information. But again, if that's the information you're absorbing and that's what you're sticking to, but you're still not seeing the result, a, you know, a, a light bulb should be going on. Okay. At some point you have to have self-reflection. It's just the reality. And you hear this all the time. I've been trading five years. I can't get any, uh, I can't get any con true consistency. What's wrong with me? There's nothing what's wrong with you. You have to start omitting bad information. And what's great about life and what's great about trading and everything else, life gives you second, third, 10th, 15th, 20th chances. Trading will give you the same thing as long as you have the capital, right? So I, I think at some point you have to turn around and, you know, and, and say to yourself, what I'm doing is just not working. Okay, what I'm doing is just not working. And again, you don't need to completely overhaul your trading. If you're trading on the one minute channel, hey, look at the 60. Just trust me. I've been, I've been advocating the 60 minute channels for about nine years. If nothing at all, right? If nothing at all, you can't say it's not for you if you don't ever look at it. Look at the 60 minute right there and then, okay? Right there and then because of all the evidence we've been showing for years and years and years, why it's omitting the noise, why it's omitting retail sentiment. You have the top, you have the bottom, you have the middle sentiment, and all three of these areas are gonna provide you value. If nothing at all, at least look at the 60 minute channel. You will be shocked, absolutely shocked, how progressively better your trading will be. Forget about the PS60 theory, forget about everything else, forget about pivots. Just by looking at a larger view, a longer view, okay, a definitive view that omits the noise, I give you my word you'll see the market in a, in a much more clear view. Again, whether you're adapting it to your other previously digested information, whether that's going to completely cancel it out, it's a whole different story. But at some point, guys, okay, you, you have to stop the insanity. You can't moan and bitch on social media that you're trading for three, four years and you don't get it. There's something you're doing wrong. There's something that you're digesting that you should stop immediately. Like again, it's like eating chocolate every single day. It's like feeding your, your newborn cigarettes and coffees. You, you know it's wrong, okay? You know it's wrong. You have to stop, okay? And again, trading will give you that second, third chance, but you have to cut it out. You have to cut out the nonsense. You have to, have to cut out the whole social media lifestyle nonsense. You have to make this is a very, very serious priority. Get to work, okay? Get to work. Look at charts, two, 3,000 ch charts a weekend. Even if you don't know what the hell you're looking at, okay? The more times you're looking at these charts, something eventually is going to click. Something eventually in your charts is going to stand out to you and say, oh my God, I think I got it. Even though if you might not get it, it might not get it for a while, but at least put in that effort. Again, if you're entering Monday morning, tomorrow morning with the same personality, with the same uh, method, with the same process that you did last week and you got absolutely nowhere, okay, and you got caught in this, that, the other thing, well, why do you think this week is going to be any difference? Okay, guys, you can be saved, okay, as long as you still have as long as you still have energy to go forward, okay, as long as you still have the drive to go forward, and, and by the way, you still have to have capital, okay, you can make a, a completely different 360 turn in your trading and you'll be shocked. But the most important part is you have to acknowledge what you're doing is wrong and look at other avenues. Because again, guys, the last thing you want to do is tap out before you see your potential. And that's the, the saddest thing, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting magically you're going to get uh, different results. So there's a way out. Okay, there's a way out. I know a lot of new traders are frustrated. 
trading breakouts and failed breakouts and all this stuff and the magical buy the dip when the market is only retracing at the rising channels, which is a bull market to begin with. You're not really buying the dips. Uh, but the most important part is you can do it. Okay, you can do it. And any trader out there can do it. You just have to stop the, you know, you have to stop the stupidity. Um, you have to put in the work. I mean, that, that, that work on the weekends is, is gold. Okay, is gold. What you're doing behind the scenes is really going to show in your trading. And again, if you start putting in the work, you'll see, you'll see you really start seeing the results. So uh, let's talk about the markets. Uh, on the surface, you know, one and a half percent losses all across the board didn't really register. I, I think what the most important part of this week was um, the market came in, right? Very, very aggressive. When I talk about the market, I want to talk about the cues. You know, we, we talked about this area. If you've been watching these videos, even the last two weeks, you kind of know we've been rusting up against this top level here. The problem was, again, we've been talking about this for, for, for a long time now. Gravity's real, okay? Gravity's real. And every single video that I've done probably in the last seven, six, seven, eight months, we've been saying the same thing. It's a linear market. Eventually, you know, you're going to get tapped out. And it's not like doing a, a, you know, a rain dance in the desert and say, one day it's going to rain, one day. No, you have to be cautiously optimistic because, again, the market, again, like I say all the time, is not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, we're, we're, we're going to yank your gains. They're just going to yank your gains. And when you, when you look at the data supporting what gravity was, okay, or is, uh, or might still be going into this week. Think about this statistic. The, the Qs last week were over 20%, 20% above the 200-day moving average. That's insane, okay, absolutely insane. And the idea that gravity can't come in or it will not yank you is absolutely asinine because, again, what we saw this week were two days in a row, okay, of some of the most aggressive pulls, especially Thursday. If you guys remember, if you guys remember the, the Thursday video, the, the Tesla yank was 40 points. Okay, 40. Okay. Uh, you had destruction in Roku, in Shop, in Netflix, in Facebook, in Apple, in Amazon, in, in NVIDIA. Just absolutely amazing. And the most incredible part about that I still saw on social media was, well, did you see how they snapped back? Very impressive. And we did acknowledge that. But the most important part is once you start getting technical damage, anything is possible. So when we went into Friday's session, I kind of thought that we were going to have a very odd session. If you remember Thursday's video, because they bounced, right? If you guys remember, because they bounced on Thursday's session, we talked about that kind of line in the sand on the rising uh, five-day moving average, that 232 area. The good news for the week, okay, the good news for the week was... Well, let me start with the bad news. The bad news for the week was all these levels got violated, okay? And they took out the five, went to the 10, the 10 got confirmed, went all the way down to the, to the 20. The good news is, did anybody, if you didn't trade beta, right? If you didn't trade beta, um, and if you just traded random stocks, did you, did you even notice that, okay? If you did trade in the beta world, of course you did, because the pulls were very aggressive and they were magnificent. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. But did you really notice that? And because this was so swift, the bulls actually have a case here. They do. At first, I was, you know, at first going into this weekend's uh, chart work, I was like, well, I can knock out these charts in five minutes. And I did. Okay. And I did. I, I looked at, you know, I looked at beta and I said, well, it's pretty, pretty easy going into Monday. These things confirmed they're going lower. But the more and more I thought about it and I started looking at charts and I said, well, wait a minute, the bulls actually do have a case here that they actually survive this. Because again, if you looked at the last several times that we got to this level, right? The breakdown, right? Check, check this out. So you had the breakdown, they actually survived and went higher. The breakdown survived going higher. The breakdown survived going higher. And that, this is kind of what we are again. So at first I said to myself, well, it's pretty cut and dry tomorrow. I'm, I'm gonna wait for uh, confirmation to the downside on all these beta names. I think we could have a five-star play again. Uh, I think this could be another wash again. And I think everything's all good. But the more and more I started looking at charts after, right? I started looking at charts after just to kind of get another understanding. I really do believe that the bulls have a case here. Again, whether the bulls can actually reclaim, right? Reclaim that 233 level, that 234 level on the cues, that's a whole different story. Again, we don't need to be smart enough to try to figure out. Let it play out, right? Just the way we knew 232 was going to be pivoted to the downside. Now we know where, we, where they need to reclaim. Now we know if, if, if they start losing the 229 area to the downside, it's going to be more selling. So you don't need to be the sharpest sh uh, tool in the shed. We know which way, if they confirm, it's going to go. The question is, at least now, have an open mind. So if, again, if you're turning around and saying to yourself, well, you're an idiot. The market's going to go back higher. Maybe it will. 
right? But maybe the idiot, right? King of the idiots. What happens if we confirm? Do you still want to buy the dip? Just ask yourself that question. So it's very, very important to kind of have that open mind uh, going into this week. Um, I think last week, the Apple pre-announcement kind of opened up well, I put it this way, I don't even know if they kind of opened up the floodgates for the initial selling, but I think at this point, when again, when you have a, the Q's 20% uh, over the 200 day moving average, I don't think the market needs a lot of excuses. So when Apple did pre-announce, again, obviously took down the semis, um, any, you know, the chip makers, all that stuff. But, but again, what I did like, what I saw the bulls do, at least reclaim macro levels. So now the question is, are we gonna go higher or are we gonna go lower? And again, we don't need to answer that question right now. We don't even need to have an opinion. We just need to have a game plan, okay? We have to have an open mind and just understand we confirm here, we go higher, we confirm here, we go lower. So going into this week, I am I am sell biased, okay? I am, I am sell biased. This is the first time, um, this is the first time I've probably said that in a while. Um, I, else, I am sell biased, but again, it doesn't mean that we won't trade to the upside. I've been, you know, again, cautiously optimistic every single day and yes, I'll trade to the downside again when there's a channel confirmation. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. But there's some really good value to the upside. And, and the most amazing part about that sell-off, or even let's just say the last two days worth of sell-off is there's still so much speculation money, okay, running into names like Stamp and Tesla, right? If you, know, if you guys notice, you notice Tesla didn't sell off on Friday, right? You guys notice that Tesla did not sell off on Friday. So again, it shows you there's no fear speculation money is still alive okay and the most important part is again to get a true aggressive breakdown macro you need a buyer strike okay and you need a buyer strike on the names that are constantly uh constantly getting in that speculation money so for example if you see stamp tesla stop going up that's bearish if you see stamp for example uh, go, stop going up. That's bearish. Again, these are very, very aggressive stocks. That SD, what was it? The SDGR. Again, just massive, massive aggressive news. So you wouldn't even know that the market was down 200, 300, 150 points because, again, there is so much flow on both ways uh, of the market. So Friday session, uh, very solid week to begin with. Uh, very, very good solid week. I am pleased. Um, I, I thought the pivots this week were very smooth. You didn't, you didn't need a lot, okay? You didn't need a lot. There, there was a lot of aggression, number one, both sides of the market. Thursday and Friday, really r ridiculous washes, okay? Very, very aggressive names. Uh, I traded Roku back-to-back -back days. Really, really monster moves. And Roku, I, I swear, Roku is starting to get to that point that, that it's starting to replace, at least for me, it's starting to replace Netflix as number two on my uh, favorite stock list. Like, Roku is amazing. It's an amazing stock to trade. Um, you got ridiculous amounts of liquidity you got ridiculous amounts of range and it's starting to get to the point that it's kind of forming into a stock a cold stock not quite like tesla but it again it is a very very rare breed of speed and power which is which is really really great which you want to uh, do some size and expanding range stock so uh roku is really good this week uh tesla i traded uh tesla i trade i picked spots this week on tesla um which was much better for me, but I'm still, I'm still getting out of the position early, which is good. Okay. Cause again, in my mind, when you get a three, $4 move, even a $5 move, just even going back to last month, you're like, holy crap, I just caught, you know, Tesla for five. These days, $3 is like, you know, is like 12 cents, well, not 12 cents, but like 50 cents on the old, old ways of trading. So I'm still trying to get used to it. But again, it's not the easiest thing trading it on equity because again, the spreads are, aggressive the liquidity is not great so you need a bigger move so i've been picking my spots this week on tesla uh did okay with it but again it's still very very stressful just because of the nature of the aggression again if you're trading on the, on the option side and you're betting you know the, the 1200 next week calls i'm just joking around but if you're doing that at least you already know what your you know your max drawdown is when you're trading equity you're like holy crap this thing's moving so fast that you can't even get a good sense because there is no reload buyers or sellers that you could quickly identify because of the moves are so quick. So you have to kind of, um, you have to kind of, um, to kind of get used to it. But again, picking spots in that as well. Um, so good week, good week. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this week. I, again, uh, here's the numbers going into this week, guys, before uh, we even go on to the downside. Uh, if the Q's 
uh, start confirming down that 229 area is bearish again you don't need to overthink if the Q's start reclaiming 234 on a close that is bullish that is your macro area again you, there's no room for interpretation there's no room for discussion that's what it is okay there's nothing more there's nothing left that's what it is uh, everything else in between you have to trade channels to kind of omit uh, the risk factor. Um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about Friday uh, again. Very very aggressive session. Um, Tesla again. Tesla had that big opening range move. Uh, 918 19 needs to build. Obviously never uh, even came close uh, to confirming that. So that's this is kind of going to be the sneaky can uh, sneaky pivot uh, for this week. So any any build this week on Tesla 918 19. Let me show you the 60 minute channel. So here's Tesla. So any build over this confirmation, right, this whole channel here, any build over this 918, 919, I think could wake it up. So that's going to be the play uh, for the week going forward. Uh, FTSV never got up there. Uh, this was definitely the move of the day, and it really shows you, uh, it really does show you how speculation money is alive still, okay, and people don't care that the market's down 300 points. People will buy. So here is the play on Stamp. We saw that first sell-off. It never sold off. That Stamp was down literally a couple of bucks uh, the whole morning as the Dow was down was getting destroyed and the Nasdaq was getting destroyed. Uh, so red to green on watch. Again, keep this in mind. Red to green is not a pivot. It's just momentum from the previous day. Uh, 160 needs to build. And Stamp just went ballistic. Um, congratulations, everybody. Took Stamp. Here was, you know, here was the, one, the 150. Here, here was the 158 sneaky area right here. And here is the confirmation channel off the 160. So once it confirmed 160, it just, just exploded. It went as high as... Uh, to 185 big big move on uh, stamp uh, BYND obviously not, never got up to the 22 20, uh, 20 and a half uh, 23 area they do report uh, earnings in four days finally get an earnings report I, I personally think they're gonna be good again if I'm wrong I'm wrong but it doesn't, it's not gonna cost me any money but I, I think they're gonna be good I think a lot again a lot of out of the money deep out of the money calls were being bought in the last several months we'll see you know we'll see we'll see what happens there uh, ZS nice move to the downside uh, 55 50 if it builds below uh, can flush more. Here is ZS, right? Here's the ZS chart, right? Here's the 5550 opening range low, 5550. So once it confirmed 5550, it got hit all the way down to the 52 area. Uh, Chewy went pre market. Um, I didn't get any Chewy, went pre market, which is kind of sad because. I really like that setup. Uh, 30, if you got if you got the trade, good job. We ran up like a dollar and change. Uh, 30, 90, 31 needs to build. Um, I did not get a piece of this trade. It just started running pre-market. So here's the 30, here's the 31 right here. 31 went to 32.50, which is kind of a shame, but it is what it is. Uh, TWST never got up there. Uh, ISRG is actually holding up fairly well. Uh, it never got up to the 620, 621 area. But ISRG actually held up very, very well. Okay, it really did. So uh, keep an eye on it for this week. Uh, Roku, I hit Roku now back-to-back -back days. This is really good. Uh, Roku, uh, 121, if it, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, so here is Roku. Right, here's the 121. Right, here's the 121. Beautiful move, right? Beautiful move initially went down to the 19 area. Uh, that was my first trade of the day. That was really, really good. Apple got destroyed. I mean, congratulations for you guys who got Apple. Uh, 117, 20, 117. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Apple. Here was Apple. Here's the you know, here's the area of interest. Just got destroyed. Uh, Apple's coming into you know it's coming into an important area. Okay, this uh, 310 area this week is going to be important. That is the low of the pre announcement. So for this week, guys, set an alert. Uh, for Apple, this thing starts building below that 310. You're going to have more selling. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, so this thing got destroyed as well. Perfect trade on Roku. That was really, really, really aggressive. Volume uh, stamp ran up 25 points. So that was aggressive as well. And what's cool about, you know, what's cool about experience, this is kind of what we talk about experience. Um, I realized a long time ago, okay, for all you guys who don't know, um, I was, I actually swung, um, I actually swung small cap stocks for years. This is before I found pivots. And the reason why I stopped, uh, because all these artificial, you know, alert services, they started. So I used to swing them all the time. And I actually traded them. And then I realized there was no money left in them. Okay. There really wasn't any money left in them. And then I had to come to a realization that, that it had to be a better way. Okay. And this is kind of how I, I stumbled onto pivots and, and really um, kind of really uh, developed them over time. Uh, but here's a way that I, I've been playing and showing that you can still play small cap stocks okay but you have to play them you have to play them in a much more 
smarter way. So if you guys remember that stock Toka, right? You guys remember Toka? And again, I, I realized, I realized, you know, quite a couple months ago that the strongest, if, if you do trade a small cap stock, you got to trade this on, on rising support because that's where emotional sellers that bought the highs will sell it to you. And once the rising support holds, okay, once the rising support holds, they usually do trap, especially early eager shorts, and they don't even realize that they're shorting it at the bottom of the range that's rising. And here's a perfect example of, again, you don't need to trade beta to trade the PS60 theory, okay? This has nothing to do with Tesla and Netflix, anything again. So Toka, the first back test here, 138, right? So then 148. If the bulls hold on, snap back, it can, and, and, and check this out. I mean, this is one of the bigger moves. I know a lot of you guys in the room actually did it, which great job. Um, you know, so here is the rising support, right? This 138 area. And again, this is, again, the whole point of the PS60 theory, uh, trading channels. When you're getting to the bottom of the range, this is where emotional sellers will meet technical buyers. When you get to the top of the range, it's emotional buyers meeting technical sellers. And this... They trapped perfectly. They trapped perfectly 138, 139, and the damn thing went to like 230. Okay, so again, you don't need to trade beta. You don't need to trade Amazon to trade the pivots. As long as you have a range and real volume, you can trade Bitcoin, you can trade futures, you can trade Forex, crypto, anything with anything with a range and an aggressive real volume. You, it's a technical analysis is technical analysis. Just kind of uh, just kind of understand that. So uh, going to this week again, I am um, I want I want to say I'm 70 30 uh, sell bias. Again, it doesn't mean um, I won't buy stock. It's just kind of the initial um, kind of the initial reaction for this week. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas uh, for this week that I actually do like. Um, yeah, for, for all you small cap lovers, I, I kind of like this Casa, okay? I kind of like this Casa. Take a look at it. It's not bad. Um, you know, it, it broke out on Friday, okay? It broke out on Friday. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. Uh, 490, right? If it starts reclaiming 495, you have room for like 530, 560. Uh, HYRE, uh, I'm actually holding calls on this thing. Uh, a buyer came in. Uh, a buyer came in on Thursday, right? He bought the 1500 April five calls, okay, and you can see there's really, really good strength on this thing. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building above like you know 415, 420. Again, you know if you start seeing more reload, uh, more sweepers come in on this thing, it might be worth a shot. Maybe it does uh, get some legs. So keep an eye on that. Uh, let me give you guys some other ideas that you might take advantage of. Uh, BCLI for all you guys who are trading on the smaller cap names. Keep an eye on this thing. The value play here is obviously. The rising 60 minute support. You wanna, again, it's kind of the same thing as that token trade. So you kind of wanna watch this thing kind of go back into rising 60 minute support and hold. But if you do wanna trade this thing on strength, it needs to reclaim that $7 area. Uh, Domo doesn't look bad at all. Okay, Domo doesn't look bad at all. Uh, again, good strength here on the, on, the, on the day that the market sold off. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building above that, uh, you know, 27 and a quarter, 27.30. Uh, it might start its next leg up. And let me give you one more non-beta name. Um, look at this GTT. Keep an eye on this GTT. Not a bad looking chart. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts reclaiming 15, right? Pretty orderly. Again, good strength here uh, on a weak market day. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. Uh, if this thing starts building above that $15 area, uh, you could get your next leg up. Uh, guys, for all you guys who are joining us tomorrow, uh, in the live webinar for the first time, please get there early. That's what we'll discuss. Uh, Netflix and Alibaba and Roku and Tesla. Again, Tesla did not go down, which is a very, very important part. Doesn't mean it can't go down lower uh, this week. Just in the initial view is very, very strong. Uh, I also like Apple. Again, it showed you that 310 area is going to be very, very important. But the most important part is we'll get their early action uh, on the Pivot Watch. Guys, have a great Sunday. God bless, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.